The radius r in inches of a spherical balloon is related to its volume, v, by r of v equals this, right? The cube root of 3 times v divided by 4 pi. Air is pumped into the balloon, so the volume after t seconds is given by v of t equals 10 plus 20 t. Letter a, find the composite function r of v of t. Okie dokie. So we're going to get down to that exactly. So letter A, all we have to do is find R of V of T. This is just your straight up composite function notation, right? We've done tons of problems like this already. So if you guys need a little bit more help, go back to the original problems or the, you know, the beginning problems in this playlist, if you're on the playlist. Um, but all of the, um, all the numberings are right down here in the tips and tricks, all right? So remember, with composite functions, you always work from inner function to outer function. That's with the parentheses. There's two functions here. There's the v of t, and that is inside the parentheses. So this is the inner function. And the r function is the outer function. So if we work from inner to outer, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to plug in that input, which is usually a number, into the inner function and solve. But however, our inner function is just, and I'll put a number 1 here, our inner function is just v of t. And v of t, they told us, was this, 10 plus 20t. Can't do any solving there because we don't have an actual number for t. Now we will use that answer, that's our new input that we just solved for, and plug it in for the outer function. So for number 2, we're now doing r of v of t. But what was v of t equal to? It was this. So I'm literally going to plug in that 10 plus 20t into my r function, which means that any time that I see a variable, I need to plug in this and not just the variable. There's only one variable here. It might look like there's two. There's a v on the top and pi on the bottom. But remember, pi is just a number. It never, never ends, but it's roughly 3.14. So we're solving for v. v is the variable. So in this case, I'm going to say it's the cubed root of 3 times, not v anymore, it's what we solved before. So it would be 3 times 10 plus 20t. And that's all over 4 pi. That's the answer to a. If you wanted to simplify this out, we can. So maybe I'll just say that this is r of v of t, which equals the cubed root of, if you wanted to distribute, if you wanted to distribute, the 3 has to get multiplied by the 10 and by the 20t. So you can say, um, we'll say 3 times 10 is 30 plus 60t all over 4 pi. Either way, whichever answer is fine, doesn't really matter. They didn't say, you know, most simplified terms, so either one is perfect for me. Okay. Now, we're just going to use that formula and do letter B. It says, find the exact time when the radius reaches 10 inches. So, I'm going to put part B over here. We want to find the time, and they gave us the radius. The radius, they told us, was 10 inches. So, I'm going to use this formula that they gave me over here. I'm going to simplify this as, well, actually, I'm first going to write it, and then I'll tell it to you guys. So right now we have this. I'm going to take the, the one at the bottom, the one that we simplified. So this would be 30 plus 60t all over 4 pi. Okay. Now, we have basically two variables here. We have the t, the t which is the time, and we have this whole junk, which is is basically just the outer function, and the outer function is an r, so that means that this is a radius. So I can just say that this is a radius. Now it makes it much simpler. Now we just have one formula where I need to find the time when the radius equals 10. Where am I going to put the 10, guys? Am I going to put the 10 on this side 
for the R? Or am I going to put the t the time on this side, or the 10 on this side for the T? What do you think? It's definitely going here, because 10 inches, that's an R value. It said when the radius reaches this. So I'm going to say this is 10 equals the cubed root of 30 plus 60T all over 4 pi. Now it's just algebra time. So we have to undo the cubed root. That's the first thing we got to do. So how do you undo a cubed root? You just cube it. That's it. So whatever you do on one side, you got to do on the other side, all right? So if you cube a cubed root, bye-bye. That whole thing goes bye-bye. But now we have to just do 10 cubed. And 10 cubed is 10 times 10 times 10. So this would now be 1,000 equals 30 plus 60t all over 4 pi. Now they say exact time. So that means that we have to actually use uh, the pi. We have to actually plug in, you know, what pi equals into the calculator and solve. They don't want us as to have a t um, number that has a pi in it. So now we come here and I can say that this is 1,000 over 1. And now I have two fractions. What you can do is you can cross multiply. So 1,000 times 4 pi equals 30 plus 60t. And now I'm actually going to do this math. So it's basically 4,000 times pi. You get, actually, you know what, maybe, maybe I'll do the math at the end just so that we get an exact, 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 and I'm not um, simplifying at any point in time. So we want to solve for t. So I have to get rid of the 30 on both sides. So 1,000 times 4 pi minus 30. That gets rid of this, right? And that equals 60t. And now I want t by itself. It's being multiplied by 60, so I have to divide by 60. And there you go. So now I just have to plug this into the calculator. So you can do it in, you know, two shots. You can do this and then divide it by 60. So I'm just going to do it in one shot, but the answer should be exactly the same. I'm going to put the T over here. So in the calculator, I'm going to say 1,000 times 4 times pi minus 30. That whole thing minus 30, then divide by 60. And you get an exact amount of basically 208.9. And that is in, let's see, what time did they give us? They said seconds, T seconds. So this is how many seconds it takes to get that radius. Oof. Okay, guys. So there you go. The answer for both parts. Looks like it was mostly algebra. But we did have to make our composite function here. But this part was all just algebra, all right? So composite functions are fun. <laughs> We're almost done with this playlist. If you guys are on the playlist, I highly suggest it. We try to, you know, have all of our videos, you know, nice and neat for you guys so that you guys don't have to be looking anywhere. Um, but yeah, so definitely check out the playlist if you aren't on it now. Uh, we have tons more math playlists coming your way. If you're in physics, we have tons of physics problems for you to do. Um, if you guys are having trouble there, thank you so much for coming to the channel and checking out this video. I really hope it helped. Um, if you want to help us out, please hit the subscribe button. That would mean the world to us. Thank you so much, and I will see you guys all in the next question. Bye-bye.